Here we have a 2009 Dodge Caliber 2.0 liter engine with a check engine light on and a code store, a P2017 intake manifold runner position sensor circuit high bank one. We're going to be looking at this code and we're going to analyze what is the cause of this fault. Normally when you have a high input code, it's usually related to an electrical circuit fault. But we're going to find out to see if we actually have a circuit failure or a mechanical failure. So let's do some analysis. All right, the manifold flow control valve, it's an actuator controlled by the PCM. And it has a position sensor that reports the position of the valve to the PCM as feedback. The way it works, if we look at this wiring diagram, terminal number one, it's a ground at all times so that's the constant ground and terminal number four from the sensor it's a ground supplied by the PCM the PCM supplies a 5 volt reference at terminal number six and this 5 volts will be constant at all times when the engine is running so those two grounds and the 5 volts are always constant the PCM controls the actuator in a duty cycle mode by supplying voltage to the actuator and that's going to move the valve to increase or decrease its opening based on its duty cycle and then at terminal number five it's the signal from the sensor that will report to the PCM the position of the valve as it was commanded. So normally, if you want to test, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to hook up a multimeter and we're going to ground one lead and the other lead we're going to back probe the signal wire because that's the signal that will change based on its position. And the signal works from zero volts to a five volt scale. Normally, when the voltage exceeds approximately 90% of the value of five volts, Anything above 90%, which is 4.5 volts, will trigger a circuit high input treble code. So that's what we're going to check. We're going to back probe this signal and we're going to see if the voltage is above 4.5 volts. Anything higher than 4.5 would trigger this code for a certain amount. If that voltage is there for a certain amount of time, it would trigger the code. So that's where we're going to test and this is how we're going to hook up a multimeter and determine if the valve is working properly or not and the sensor itself if it's reporting the right signal based on its position. First let's start by locating the manifold flow control valve. Here's the manifold flow control valve as its circle and we're going to back probe the signal wire from this valve and we'll hook up a multimeter and see what type of voltage we're getting. Here's our multimeter connected and we're getting approximately 4.58 volts coming out of that sensor. So that's higher than the 4.5 uh, volts, which will set the treble code of high input code. So now let's hook up a scanner and look at this. The voltage should be very similar on the scanner. Should be close to the five volt scale. Here's our scanner connected, and if we look at the flow control valve position, it's, it's five volts. This constant five volts is what's triggering the code. The voltage is higher than 90%, and that's what is triggering the sensor circuit high input fault. Now, if we look at the flow control valve on the close position, the minimum should be 1.69. That is the voltage that is expected when the valve is closed. Flow control valve position should be approximately 3.8 volts. This is when the valve gets open. That's the voltage you should be expecting. So we're getting above the 3.8 voltage, which is setting the trouble code of high input code. Now, normally this could be caused by an electrical fault on the system like an open wire. But we're going to look into the system and see if we actually have a circuit failure or a mechanical failure. I removed the flow control valve from the intake manifold. I want to see if this valve is capable to respond 
the voltage measurement based on its position. So let's hook up a scanner, look at the data and move the valve and see how it responds. Let's focus on the flow control valve position. Right now we're measuring five volts. I have the valve removed from the tip manifold with a set of pliers. I'm going to be moving this valve position. As the position changes, I'm expecting to see a change in voltage. Right now I'm measuring 4.9 volts. I'm gonna move the valve a little bit and I wanna see a change in voltage, which in this case, it dropped to 3.9 volts. As I move the valve a little bit more, the voltage should keep dropping. Now we have 2.8 volts. And as I move the valve a little bit more, the voltage drops to 1.5 volts. Move the valve a little bit more and it should drop. Here it is, 0.32 volts. So this is an indication that the valve actually changes the voltage based on its position. So it seems that it's not a circuit failure. It There's something else going on on this system causing this voltage not to be where it is expected by the PCM. The flow control valve mounts into the intake manifold and the valve itself gets spline to this center shaft. When the computer commands this valve, it moves uh, plates in the intake manifold which control the flow of the airflow inside the manifold. So these are your intake runners with these valves that are uh, contaminated by carbon buildup, causing them to get stuck. So I'm going to remove this shaft and I'm going to clean all the carbon buildup, assemble everything back together, reinstall everything and we'll test again and see if that makes a change on the sensor as it's installed back into the manifold. All right, here's the intake runner control valve at its normal off position, creating a restriction of airflow. Here's the position of the sensor. When the PCN commands the motor to open, this valve opens like this, allows more airflow to pass, and that's our position of the intake runner control valve. And as soon as you let it go, there's a spring tension allows it back to close. It goes back to its normal state voltage. Let's look at it again. As it opens, that's fully open, 3.4 volts. It starts to close down, voltage drops, turn around 1.2, 1.3, 1.2. So now let's remove the intake manifold gasket. This ga gasket should be replaced, otherwise you end up with vacuum leaks. Make sure you clean the surface where it makes contact with the gasket and the manifold so you can install a brand new gasket. Now here we have a brand new gasket on the intake manifold. Since we proved that moving the position sensor manually, it actually changes the voltage to its specification. So the problem was just carbon buildup on the manifold causing the fault.